Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the tags drop down inside the elements panel to gain a deeper understanding of what these tags do and specifically where they're going to be used. Now, if you're interested in Framer, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into their accessibility panel. So I'll leave a link below to that episode. Now these two episodes are going to be kind of similar. I'm probably even going to use footage from one to the other just so because there's no point in explaining it again. But in the context of Webflow, there might be some nuances that we can get into with the various different bits of software. So without further ado, let's jump into Webflow and take a deeper dive here. Now, if you didn't know inside of Webflow, the element tag should be probably one of the first things you think about before you start styling. And you can get to it by clicking on any element going up to the element settings or pressing D. And then we've got this tag option here and you'll see a list of all of the different tags that you can change these elements to. Now there's a really handy image that I referred to when I was first learning what all these tags kind of do. This is the flow that goes through my mind and you'll see the very last thing on that list is a div. I'll leave a link below to this actual image, but you might use it to decide what tag to choose. But so the div here, which as I say is semantically meaningless, is primarily used for styling and breaking up content. A footer, another popular one. This represents the footer of the nearest sectioning elements. Now, what I mean by sectioning elements is only four, which is article, aside, nav, and section. And you'll see that all of these are available to us within Framer. So it represents, you can put a footer inside of any of these elements. If it's parent is the body, so if it's not inside of any of these things, then it will represent the footer of the, of the page, basically. Now the header, which is exactly the same, but the header of the sectioning element. You often put headings within the header, a h1, a h2, or something like that, but it isn't required. The next one we have here is nav. So this is the section of the page where there are links to either other pages or sections within the current page, oftentimes in the head main header of the page where you've got sticky nav. Not every area needs to have a nav. So oftentimes in the footer, you'll have a bunch of links and stuff like that. No need to have a nav there. Um, and also it's worth noting that you can have other content with inside of a nav. It doesn't necessarily need to be just a list of links. You can have a paragraph, you can have a, a header or whatever. As I say, a nav is a main sectioning element. Next one is main. This is quite an important one because it represents the main content of your page or your application. This is where everything kind of happens. This is where the main content is. There cannot be more than one main on the page. Now remember that I've seen instances where there's multiple mains on the page. There can't be more than one main unless one of those mains is hidden. Now with the footer, the main and the header out the way, I can basically say that my generic layout of most pages is inside my body or inside the main kind of frame of the page, I'll have a, a header, a main and a footer and everything kind of goes inside of those three elements. I will say if you're enjoying this video, a like and subscribe would do the channel wonders. If you're finding value in this episode, then consider leaving us a super thanks with the button below. Now on with the episode. Here's a section. The thing to note that now is a recent addition that whenever you create a section, they actually make that into a section element automatically for you. So try that again click on that and then you can immediately see that the tag has already been made into a section. I like sections because basically they really help accessibility users jump and navigate different areas within the page, but it is less important than using a nav, an article or an aside. Really it's the, it's the next lowest thing before you actually get to a div when deciding what element to use in that document that I spoke about earlier. Generally, my rule of thumb is every time you have a header, wrap it in a section. It's not required to have a header within a section, but it doesn't make sense if you don't have a header. So an article, as I say, I wasn't necessarily a fan of Framer's description of an article. A frame wrapping in an entire content of a page, including title and content, excluding generic stuff like navigation. I disagree with that. I don't think an article should be used as the entire content of the page. 
An article is a self-contained composition of content within the content of an already existing page. So for example, like a list of blogs, each of those blogs is independent and irrespective of the other blogs, basically. I would not use it as an entire wrapper of the page. I would basically treat a, an article or a blog article as a, just a brand new page that is in of itself a blog or an article within itself. I would then nest other articles within that blog post itself, which is just a normal page. You should think of this like it's independently distributable. So if you take that article and move it anywhere, it just makes sense on its own. It doesn't need to reference or it's not in relation to anything else. You can have multiple articles on a page, like I say, like a blog posts page, and it should have a heading. So going down, the next one we have is an aside. So I had a brief conversation with Adam Lowe in another one of my episodes about the use of an aside. And he's always understood the aside to be used kind of as a sidebar to the main content. Now, I don't think it really matters. It does, I don't really care too much, but from my research and my understanding, an aside is used as complementary content to the main document of the page. So it's like subsidiary information. It's indirectly related to the content. Yes, you can use it as an as uh, a, a sidebar to that, but it's, it's basically saying that this is in somewhat related to the main purpose or the main information on the page. Now, an address is a bit of a weird one. Addresses represent the contact information given its current context and is often placed inside of a footer. And the only other thing to note here as well, an address should contain the name of the person you're, that the contact information relates to. So, and these could be social links, this could be an address, a URL, this could be um, a physical address or an email address even. I can imagine you'd end up hiding the uh, name of the person. So a figure is a self-contained bit of content, similar to a side, but obviously it's related to the main content of the, of the document, the, bot, the, the page. You often put images or graphics or even code snippets inside of a figure, and there's an optional caption that you can give it using a fig caption. Now I mentioned in another episode that I'm surprised that Webflow don't give you a fig caption because they kind of come hand in hand. Framer actually give you a fig caption. A figure is often referenced within the main content of the page. I hope this wasn't too dry and now hopefully you have a better understanding of the different elements that you can encounter on the accessibility panel. Cheers for sticking around and happy no coding.